in a time long ago, in the far-off land of India, there was a successful merchant. His name was Rahula. He was young, handsome, and very virile. Rahula was besotted, totally and completely in love with a beautiful young courtesan that lived on the other side of a wide river that ran through their town. His desire for her was so great he could think of nothing else. Her name was Chintamani and all through the day and even at night when he wasn't spending time with her, her name would be on his lips, Chintamani, Chintamani. One day he could not wait until the end of business hours arrived and he could go to his beloved. But throughout the day a great storm had come up and the river between them had risen high and was thundering through the village. But Ahula couldn't wait. He went down to the riverside to find a boatman who would take him across the other side so that he could be with his beloved Chintaman. But each of the boatmen that he went to refused to take him. They would say, look at this river. It's too dangerous for anyone to cross. No one would take Rahula across to his loved one. He paced along the riverside, the water lapping at his feet. But he could wait no longer. He cast himself into the thundering river and tried to cross. He was a swimmer. But the power of the river was very great and he found himself tossed and turned Finally, just when he thought that he had not the strength to keep the movement of his arms and keeping him above water, coming along beside him, he thought he saw a log. So grabbing this log and holding on for as tightly as he could, he allowed the river to carry him down and take him finally to a bend where he could come to land. He dragged the log up, thinking that he could use it once again to make his way back before making his way to find the house of Chintamani. But when he arrived there, the door was locked. He went to each window, but they too were latched. But then, as he looked up, just at the opening of the chamber of Chintamani herself, he noticed a rope hanging down from her balcony. So using this rope, he clambered up, climbed over the balustrade, and was able to enter her bedroom chamber. She lay sleeping, and in the moonlight, Rahula could see her beautiful face so he bent over, speaking lovingly, Chintamani, 
Chintamani, the drops of the water from his wetness dripped down and fell on her face, waking her. And she looked up and said, Rahula, Rahula, how did you get here in this great storm? And he explained to her that in attempting to cross the river, he had found a log. And she said, but how, how did you climb to my chamber? He said, oh, thank you, my love for leaving the rope for me, Chintamani said, but I left no rope for you. And so after rising, she lit a lamp and she said, come, let us see how it was that you made your way to me. And when they went to the balustrade, they found hanging there a poisonous viper that had frozen in the coldness of the night. And then Chintamani said, how did you make your way across the river? Rahola said, I grabbed a log and the log carried me to the banks. She said, come. Let us see. And so with her lantern, they made their way down to the riverbank. And when they looked, there was the corpse of a fisherman who had fallen into the river and died. They returned to Chintamani's chamber and Chindamani turned to Rahula with tears flowing down her cheeks. And she said, Oh, Rahula, I am not worthy of your love. I am a courtesan. My beauty will fade. Your love your love is the love that can only be given to God. At that moment, Rahula had a great opening, a great realization, embracing Chintamani, kneeling before her, he thanked her and he made his way back down to the river which had now subsided and he was able to find his way back to the other side. When he arrived, he cast off his merchant's garments and he went immediately to a temple that worshipped the great Indian god Krishna and he entered in to that monastery, that temple, putting on the robes of the seeker after God. After some years following the practices. One day, when he came out of the temple doors, there, coming out of a time of worship, was a woman. And when Rahula saw her, her long black hair cascading down her back, a great desire arose. Chintamani, Chintamani. And he followed her. He followed her through the streets until finally she came to her house. And in the doorway 
she turned around knowing that she had been followed by this monk and saying, what is it that you seek of me? In turning around, Rahula saw that this was not Chintamani. So he looked at her and said, Would you be gracious enough to bring me two needles? The woman entered her house and when she came out, with the needles and handed to them to Rahula. He used each needle to pierce both his eyes. Rahula became a great saintly poet. But from this story, looking at the theme, you might even say the purpose of our being together, the death of love. What is the symbolic meaning of the piercing of the eyes? What for you is the deep meaning of the piercing of our eyes? Eliminate the old ways of perception. Yes. Not just the old ways of perception. Step further. The piercing of our eyes, symbolically speaking. You didn't want to be attracted to the physical beauty anymore, he wanted to be attracted to the spiritual beauty. Go deeper in the place you are now. Recognizing that there's no fulfilling of what we want in any creation. In the world. And really shifting totally away. The word of desire. What is the end of love? What is the absence of illusion? Thank you.